COVID-19 pandemic and its effect on work as we know it. Find out how it affects you on today's episode of 700 Club Nigeria. But first... My brother, my sister, papa, mama, picking. Corona, no big passes. We go fight time, we go win. As long as we remember to always do the right thing. Wash your hands, love each other, we go win. Oh. Corona, no the virus, we the worry human being. You no know, get let go, but he the waka from person to person. But if it be time, if it stop time, if we maintain good hygiene and practice social distancing, we go in all. No shaking hands with your neighbor. Blow them a kiss from afar. Special, we're courageous, we are awesome human beings. We the super, we get power, we can conquer anything. If we hear what and obey laws and exercise discipline, wash your hands, love each other, we go we know. If it be like say you know well, like it's something they do you. And you feel, say, you believe, say, he get a seed to you. And your body, no grease or G, like it's something they do you. No let panic finish you, you go in all. Self-isolate for the sake of. Courageous, you're a cajad human being. You too much, oh, you get power, you can conquer anything. Only if you hear what and obey laws and exercise discipline. Wash your hands, love one another, we go we know. My brother, my sister, papa, mama, and Pekin. COVID-19, no big pass, we, we go fight and we go in. Just as long as we remember to always do the right thing. Wash your hands, love each other, we go in. Oh. Hi there, welcome to another episode of 700 Club Nigeria. How has your week been so far? Please let me know by commenting on our Facebook page, 700 Club Nigeria Partners. It's always a delight to share in your experiences. Now, to get us started on today's episode is a management consultant and human resource professional with an MSc in industrial psychology. And she's here to share some insights on the impact that COVID-19 is having on the work as we know it. Folake Agumbiade. Welcome to 700 Club Nigeria. Thank you. Thank you. So great to be here. So great to share the stage with you today. Amazing. <laughs> so Pretty how amazing. have you been? I've been good. I've been good. I've been trying to stay safe and stay productive. And stay locked down? Yes. Stay home. <laughs> now, there's, there's, there's a new phrase that, you know, is everywhere, which is the phrase working from home. Mm. Prior to this time, I mean, that was something foreign or alien that, you know, never applied to us as a society. But here we are dealing with the realities of it. So what actually does this entail working from home? Well, working from home is a very unique experience. Thankfully, uh, for the past almost four years, I've been running two organizations, two brands from my home office. So I would say it has equipped me quite well to reintegrate into the future as we know now. It's, uh, it's a rude awakening to the fact that we can no longer see organizations as buildings. You don't have to be in a structural building with your aesthetics of work to actually work. So working from home is the new normal. If you are not working and you're at home, then you are not making money. Mm -hmm. 
it's regular now and it's better we come to that realization and we start making changes that help us mm. move into the future of work which is now i agree with you and you mm. know it's interesting to know that the future of work is now it's no longer in the future after covid 19. and um well whether we like it or not most people that i know you know are able to cheat on employers by not doing the work that they ought to do in the actual hours that they should but how does this you know, new normal now impact on that. You can't just um, say you've done the work. You need to prove that you're doing the work with worksheets and means of verification. As a consultant, as a management consultant, how do you advise your clients? Well, a key part of working from home is to realize that there is work involved. Mm. You need to create structures and systems that make you accountable to your employer. In other parts of the world, what you get is that there are timesheets, there are logbooks, there's actual proof in countries where you, they pay you per hour mm -hmm. for the amount of output that you get. So organizations that have not started um, introducing automation, information technology, where you can actually check what your staff is doing per time and be able to track that actual work is being done. It comes with a lot of planning. It comes with investing in technology, video conferencing, and so many other things. But with the right artificial intelligence, the future of work is here to stay. And the earlier we start moving in that direction, the better for everyone, both the employer and the employees. It's understandable that, I mean, this is where work is going, you know, for the future, which is now. But we are, we are not structured in such a way to have a perfect work environment. Mm -hmm. I know that I still struggle with internet. I still tr struggle True. with connectivity. True. I still struggle with balance. You know, here, okay, here we are. Here I am stuck at home. It's time for lunch. Somebody wants to get a story read to them. I need to attend to one thing or the other. So two quick questions. How do we s s make sure that we're ready? structurally, mm. you know, and the things, the inputs that we need to make this successful, and then how do we really balance? Okay, organizations need to invest in technology. Like you said, um, high-speed internet, hardware sometimes for video conferencing, you want to use Zoom, you want to use Hangout to have meetings, conferences, and all that. You need to make investments in that area beyond paying rent and mm. utilities. Mm. Actually, the future of work is cheaper in the long run, in terms of overheads for organizations, what they're spending money on. Because when you're in the office, you have consumables, you have a lot of things. But thankfully, there's the cashless economy now where you don't need to carry cash around. You can send your um, documents through Google Drive. So if you have not accepted that technology is here to stay, and the world has changed forever, mm -hmm. then this is the time to accept it, or you'll be left out. Mm. You must really be there and invest in it. I know you have worked the last four years running a home office, you know, and you are a pro at balancing, juggling the balls and really balancing them. Yes, how, I do, am. How, how have you achieved that? Well, it comes with, first of all, setting structures. You must be strategic. You must be thinking about your objectives at the end of the day. Highly productive people don't just live their lives m running through the motions without what you want to achieve. Mm -hmm. So for me, I'm self-taught. I'm self-driven. For some people, you need to get help. You need people to help you actually structure yourself. You know, the time for meals. You have to get up. It's not, when you work from home, it's not a time to lay in bed. Holiday. No. <laughs> you have to have regular times when you get up in the morning. You get the meals ready. You plan yourself. I remember in January 2018, I had to do a 31-day productivity challenge. Wow. And I had to churn out content every morning by 7 a.m. Wow. And the kids still had to go to school. And I was able to do it for 31 full days. Wow. So it takes a lot of discipline. It takes planning and making sure that the systems and structures that you build and evolve with over time mm. are actually working. Mm. And you'll find out that you'll be good. And I read something last week, um, I, I don't remember where now, and someone said that, you know, at the end of this lockdown, if you haven't achieved your goals, mm. your problem was not a lack of time, but discipline. Yes. You know, so well, how does this speak to us in, you know, our persona as per, you know, the discipline, self-discipline, you know, setting 
goals and achieving and working towards them. If there's one thing COVID-19 has done to a lot of people, is a mental slumber. People are emotionally in a coma. Mm. So rather than face the inevitable that a disruption has come, and it has turned the ball around entirely, we're busy waiting for the end of this lockdown. Mm. So the first step is realization. You need to stand up, realize that it has changed. Then you need to start taking actions. It's hard to see these things. You read them in textbooks. It's very easy. Mm -hmm. But actually getting them done, sometimes you need a coach. Mm. I need to be mm. honest. Some <laughs> people don't have it in them. True. If it were that easy, all of us would be supermen, flying the world, so conquering the world, and, and meeting our objectives. So it's, it's, it's a huge part of discipline that comes into play, and sometimes you need to get help. Mm. Sometimes you need to get help. And, sometimes you, you know, really to cry help. out to someone and say, hey, show me the way. Like, you being a management expert, I know that you are a management consultant. You have clients that you've helped. Even prior to this COVID period, you've helped, you know, walk down to make sure that their productivity is ace, you know, and, and that they're churning out results as they ought to. Very um, Unfortunately, many people are not going to go back to employment as they know it. So Nine nice. to five may become a mirage. And um, some people have lost their jobs. Other people are still going to lose their jobs, you know, when all this snaps back to normal. Mm. You know, so how do we prepare our mindsets to say things are changing? You know, it might not be business as usual. And for those who have lost jobs mm. as well. It's, it's quite sad. So I take a breath to say... Uh, it's going to be painful that quite a number of people are going to be out of jobs. Um, but that depends on you. A large part of that actually depends on you. The new normal, which at the end of this is going to be entirely a rude awakening, would require you having some certain skills. Mm -hmm. Employers will have less liquidity, and hence they will be looking for people who are fixers. That means you have a variety of skills that they can bounce off to reach their goals and objectives. A lot of outsourcing would also happen in the future of work. That means if you recreate yourself as an employee, you start working on areas where you can actually take off the burden of organizations that they pay staff for at a discounted fee, you most likely will be making more than somebody who sits in an office. Mm. So you need to update your skills, um, skills that are essential for you to be relevant, communication, negotiation, big data analysis, technology, graphic design, quite a number of things mm. that you must be updating yourself on right now. I also see that this period is um, the time to reflect and really dig deep because if this hadn't happened, so many people would not be reflective, you know, and really dig right deep inside to know what, what they carry because times are changing, you know, there's, there's a new definition of work, you know, and all that. How can we, you know, stop the panic, you know, the panic, panic attacks that we launch on ourselves mm. and really sit down and um, dig as we ought to to bring out the gold in us? I think a huge part of it, as a psychologist, I've told quite a number of people in recent times that your immunity is tied to your mental state. You need to be careful about what you're listening to, what you're watching. You, unless you're a COVID-19 specialist, I don't think you want to be CNN. The numbers are out of your control. What is in your control is what you are doing with your mind, which is staying positive. So you need to be deliberate. Hmm. Um, panic messages that have been sent around, please don't open them. It's unnecessary for you. If you're a doctor, yes, I get it. If you're a COVID-19 um, educator, yes, I get it. But you're a regular guy just trying to make ends meet and pay your bills, really. You don't want to be messing with your mind. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of resource on the World Wide Web yeah. that you can be updating yourself with yeah. rather than stuffing yourself with negative stuff. We'll come, we'll come back to that in a moment because um, there is opportunities that people need to explore. But we'll take a break, and when we return, we'll continue our conversation with Folake on the future of work. Stay with us.
If you're just joining us, this is 700 Club Nigeria. Before the break, we started a conversation about the future of work, considering the major changes that COVID-19 has brought to the workplace. And we've been talking with an HR and customer relations expert, Mrs. Folake Agumbiade. Thank you for joining us today, Folake. Thank you once again. You've made so <laughs> many great points, and we've established that for some people, work right now may be downhill, and mm. for other people, you know, it's a learning and a new experience. It'll be you know, Eureka for them. Sure. Um, before we went on the break, you were saying that there's so many channels that people can explore. You know, there are resources that have been put out there. I've seen some free resources, you know. So how would you encourage people to explore these resources and, you know, delve in to enrich themselves? A quick part to start is to realize that there is hope. Yes, people are making money right now and people will keep making money. I'm making money. <laughs> so a huge part of it is to realize that um, you need to examine what skills you should be acquiring now. How it is important to solving problems. Because what makes you, what gives you hope is, like I'll use the scripture, if you're willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. So even in COVID-19, there is a good to be eaten. But you need to be willing, first of all, to realize that you must do the work. So you identify those skills that are strategic to solving problems. Not casual skills, but problem-solving skills. There are online resources. You can use Coursera, so many other. I don't want to mention names. Just go online. Google is there. Just Google is your friend. Google it, and you'll find the resources you need to be um, putting your mind into. Then for organizations... I feel a huge part of it is um, putting systems, and I've been saying systems and structures. Um, for SMEs, for instance, they don't have KPIs. I'm a human resource manager. And I discover that a lot of times you just pay people and we don't have measurable milestones that we want to check out to see that they are really doing their jobs. So what you see that SMEs are frustrated when they keep paying bills at the end of the day and they're not getting productivity. So you need to sit down and look at the key deliverables your staff needs to be churning out now. And you, as an employer, you need to know what value you are bringing to the table because that's what will keep employers employing you. If you're an entrepreneur, you need to know what value you're giving to your customers. Mm. Um, thank you for mentioning the word entrepreneur because a lot of people might feel, okay, I'm out of job now, so the next thing is I'll go start a business. You know, I'll go and start selling food stuff mm. or things like that. Not everyone is cut out for that journey, True. right or wrong. Not everyone can be an entrepreneur. Like I say, the hardest job to do <laughs> on this side of the divide is be an entrepreneur. That means you don't know where your next pay is until you work for it. You really have to work for it. So if you are thinking of going into entrepreneurship at this point, you need to first of all realize that people won't be buying luxury items. People would want to invest their money, not invest, spend their money on essentials. So if you're an entrepreneur and currently what you sell is a lifestyle brand, maybe you sell clothes, really look at it. If we don't know how long we're going to be at home, who would be buying clothes? So True. you need to reinvent. Sometimes you need to break the entire system down and start from scratch. Create products for customers, not looking for customers for products. You must be thinking strategically, very importantly, as very, an entrepreneur. That's very important, especially mm -hmm. now that, you know, with the ban, you know, on restriction on movements, Whenever there's a lift on the restrictions, you know, there's an announcement that, okay, for people to shop for essentials, mm. you know, so we, we might want to mention what these essentials are, you know, okay. let's not assume that everyone knows what's great for them or what they could focus on, on, on you know, um, getting into business with. Okay, great. Um, for essentials, for, for, for um, products, for instance, they should be fast-moving consumer goods, FMCGs, as they're known. Food, toiletries, um, drugs. Everybody would need paracetamol and adol. So if you're in the pharmaceutical industry, you probably would thrive. If you're in food, um, if you are in um, stuff for children, because we're having to homeschool children now, you probably would thrive. Then in services, every service will sell. Like I always say, in the future of work, 
things, the, 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 the economic power will move from products to services. Mm. Because for you to offer a service, what you're offering is intellectual property. Mm -hmm. So if, you're, if, if per adventure you were doing makeup, you might want to have a YouTube page and start doing teaching makeup right. online, having classes. Someone, someone did a Canva training, which is a design training mm -hmm. online. So services will definitely thrive. Look at your system, tweak it to give value, and you'll probably do well. You'll mm -hmm. most likely do well. Um, is this the right time for partnerships? Because, um, I mean, no man is an island, right? Some of this information might be overwhelming to some people. I'm like, okay, where do I begin? Mm. How can you encourage people to work together? Do we look for like-minded people or do we look for opposites in this season? It's a very opportune time to stop wanting to be Folake and Sons International, <laughs> like right. I always say. Um, there are opportunities around you everywhere. And guess what? That CEO, that entrepreneur, that uh, marketplace professional that you've always been trying to reach, if you send them a DM on any of the social networks now, they'll pick it up. They're bored. <laughs> so <laughs> this could be a good time for you to be reaching out and building your networks. Mm -hmm. Offer them value. Don't bump into them asking for stuff. Offer them value. I'd like to share this with you. Give them value and create a network of support for yourself and your brand because it's out there. People are even willing because we're all going through a crisis together. The whole world yeah. is at your fingertips. Mm. You just have to look for them on social media, reach out to them and create the right networks. Yeah. Very create, important. Create the right networks. Collaborations are essential. Um, do you think that there's still a lot of money to be made? Because it's like, uh, I'm, not, uh, I'm not prophesying, but you know, because work has been skewed, um, there isn't so much money in circulation. Is that the general belief or you think otherwise? Well, let's be honest, liquidity is going to be affected. The economy has been at a standstill. The dollar was going through the roof. Market prices are, uh, people are inflating prices in the market. Um, oil prices are dropping. So, yes, liquidity might be a bit dicey, but in terms of money exchanging hands, there is still money to be made, a lot of money. Mm -hmm. If you are in the right location, you are thinking strategically, you are getting the necessary helps, and most of all, you are developing and evolving. Mm -hmm. Like I said earlier to someone today, we're one of the most resilient countries in the world. We have instances of disasters that have met us in the past and we're so quick to bounce back nigerians make fun of everything so you need to start thinking of your place in the big picture and what you want to do to get there mm. you know all you have said for like someone might be out there thinking huh where is my faith in this my god shall supply all my <laughs> needs according to his riches in glory <laughs> you know so what do you want to say to that God is faith the... in Christian that mm. believes, you know, these two shall pass and I'll go back to my secretary job, typing letters and getting paid at the end of 30 days. Well, I celebrate you. I'll start from there. <laughs> God is a good God. Nothing happens without God not knowing about it. Right. That's why he says, if you are willing and obedient, obedient, you will eat the good of the land. The good of the land is not for everybody. It's for the willing and the obedient. So, we're in the new normal. Mm -hmm. I hate to bust your bubble, but there is no going back to being regular. You need to be abnormal. Everything you need is in God, but he will pass it out by intellectual wisdom. You must be wise. You need to get wisdom. God is going to take care of your bills, make sure you're fine, but you must be given the right um, opportunities around you. you must be exploring the right opportunities and adding value and letting God's wisdom show through you. So you need to be wise. Do your research. It's, it's, it's out there. Seriously now, people are dealing with stuff. It's leading to depression. Mm -hmm. Some people have had suicidal thoughts, especially being locked down, not being able to interact with people as normal. What do you want to say to someone out there who's struggling with work tasks, who's mm -hmm. struggling with unemployment, who's struggling with uncertainty about where the next meal is going to come from or where the next income is going to come from? What do you want to say to them? I would say you're special. God will never bring you to a point where he will watch you drown. And you need to realize that. He loves you so much 
the hairs on your head, they are numbered. So it's important to him that you succeed. So you just need to start by just breathing. Take a breath. Like I always tell people, a breath always makes things better. Just take a break, take a breath, and let life not move you, but take control of your life. It takes a lot. We're all going through the, we're all trying to adjust. We're all trying to find our balance, find our new selves out of this process. Even with family life, people are stuck in the same house for hours now and you have to find the balance so stay afloat don't sink god has got your back stay afloat don't sink god has got your back thank you for great words for lake thank you for spending time with us today and thank you for such deep insights to make thank us realize you. that the, the future of work has changed and the future is here it's not mm. coming after covid 19 it's not it's over it's here already Thank you for your time. Thank you so much, Susan. It has been a most enlightening time with Folake Agumbiade, a management consultant and HR expert who has shared with us about the future of work. It's no longer coming after COVID-19 is over and the lockdown has been lifted. It is now. And what we choose to do with it will almost determine what happens to us and the income that we make. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Hi, my name is Esther Amba Numaba Koba. I'm a corporate woman and I'm a partner of CBN. They do exactly what Jesus Christ came to do. Spread the word about the love of God and touch lives meaningfully with the love of God. Through partnership with CBN, they take me beyond my walls on a daily basis, minute by minute. They're able to spread the word that I want to see the world hear about. I invite you to join in this partnership. You will be amazed at how far your work can go working with CBN. Try it and you will not regret it. Welcome back. I'd like to encourage you today. Are you going through a difficult time? Have you lost your job or are the verge of losing your job? Are you unsure about what you know, your work future is after now? Stay strong. God has got your back and he has good plans for you. If you would believe with me today, I'll pray with you and trust God for open doors and for insight. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Thank you because nothing takes you by surprise. Thank you because this time and season is in your hand. We pray for your children out there, everyone watching this program right now. We ask for peace. We ask for clarity. We ask for open doors, oh God. Insight as to what to do on this, at this time and on the next level. Thank you, dear Lord, because you're a prayer answering God and you have come through for us. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. As this episode comes to an end, please remember, stay safe, stay healthy in your body and in your mind, and stay hopeful. God is not dead. Goodbye, and God bless you.